Good morning, people of God. It's Pastor Jeremiah, also known as Pastor Loic, who would like to hear the word of God for the week. Before we do so, we would like to start with a word of prayer. So, in reverence to God, let us bow down our head and let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for this time that you're giving to us to be in your presence, to hear from you, to be entreated by you. We thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity to receive your word. We ask you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you open understanding, that you open our heart to your word. You say that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You say that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and that nothing that exists I was not and has not been created by the word. Everything has been created by your word. Therefore, we pray that as we hear your word, as we hear you, may you impart yourself unto us. May we become one. May you create or restore everything that has been distorted in us may you create everything that we need for us to have a meaningful existence on earth in the name of Jesus Christ thank you for imparting understanding insight, revelation unto us. You say that your word is a lamp unto our path, unto our, our steps, and a light unto our path. Lighten, therefore, our life through your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, Remove every obscurity as you say that the light shine in the darkness and darkness did not comprehend it. Therefore, let every kind of darkness in our life disappear completely as we hear your word and never come back again. Every type of ignorance let be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. And we take authority and we stand against anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of the truth. We bind it and cast it into the pit of hell. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise forever and ever. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. We would like to start a new theme or God want us to speak about a new theme the mysteries of prayer or the principles of prayer we will introduce the theme today and touch the first point of this theme and carry on the follow the week followings so prayer 
is simply talking to God. Hence, it is the means by which a person can obtain something from God. And every human being, every human being needs to speak to God throughout his journey on earth so that God can assist him thus enabling him to have a successful passage on earth. For without God, no one will be able to succeed on earth. As we see, success from the perspective of God, even as Jesus Christ said, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 25 to 26, that we, which says, When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Hence, Jesus Christ added the following in John chapter 15 verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And this is why the word of God says the following in the book of Psalm 127 verse 1 to 2. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes up, wakes but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. This is the main reason mankind needs to pray to God more frequently. In other, in other terms, mankind needs to speak to God more regularly. Therefore, the word of God encourages us to pray always, even as the Apostle Paul stated in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, pray without ceasing. Even though prayer is simply talking to God, yet one should not expect to receive anything from God. When the person asks with any kind of attitude or behavior, for there is indeed a certain way to ask something for, from someone. For instance, you cannot expect a person to give you something that belongs to him when you are asking, shouting at him. Thus, if there is a certain attitude we need to have when requesting something from another person, the same is also true when it comes to us asking something from God. This unveils unto us that there are principles that regulate the way we speak to people and more importantly the way we speak to God. Indeed, there are principles that regulate the way we ought to communicate with God to make sure that we see our petition being fulfilled. This is why the Word of God tells us the following in James chapter 5 verse 16, the last part of the verse which says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. These principles about prayer are hidden truths, which every human being needs to uncover or know and apply in order to guarantee to himself an empowerment full and successful successful passage on earth during his last time knowing that we have a common enemy who is Satan also known as the devil and he's doing everything in his power to try to render the prayer of every believer ineffective in other term unproductive for Satan knows the tremendous energy or power that the prayer of a human being can produce even as we read in the above verse from the book of James. And this is why the Apostle Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 9, 
which says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resisted fast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And the apostle Paul adds the following in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. It says, Let Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, seeing prayer in this light, we thus perceive that prayer is actually an asset. Indeed, the fact that we can talk to God directly is a huge ability and therefore we can consider it as a crucial tool. We thus understand that prayer is an art that every human being needs to master. This is why it is very important to instruct people about the principles of prayer. For there is no other time since the creation of mankind where prayer is much needed as the times in which we are living in currently. And God wants us to make full usage of our ability to pray unto Him. For the war that the forces of darkness have waged against mankind is reaching its peak. People need therefore to understand the following two aspects about prayer. One, the principles that make sure the prayer reaches unto God. Two, the principles that make sure they receive the answer to their prayer. This is where God unveils unto us the seven altars of prayer or the tribunal of prayer. We speak about the first point. And touch some part of it today and we will continue by the grace of God next week. One, the principles that make sure your prayer reaches unto God. There are profound realities that every human being needs to know and understand. Which is the fact that there are three heavenly realms or three heavens above the earth and God has revealed this unto unto us through the apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 2 to 4 I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell God knows such a one caught up to the third heaven I knew such a man whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell God knows how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. The third heaven, also known as paradise, is where the throne of God is found. This is where God resides. Isaiah chapter 16, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1. Thus says the Lord. The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? The third heaven is also referred 
as the heaven of heavens. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 10, verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14, which says, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God, your God. The earth also with all that therein is. This is why Jesus Christ instructed us not to swear by heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 34. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is, the, it is God's throne. The second heaven refers to the outer space, also known as the celestial heaven or the astral world. This is where the sun, the moon and the stars are found. This is where all the celestial bodies are located. And the second heaven is what God established on the fourth day of the creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 19 which says, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let there be for signs and for season and for days and years. And let there be for light in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great light, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. The first heaven relates to the atmosphere above us, which is composed of the troposphere, the tratosphere, and the mesosphere. The first heaven was established by God on the second day of the creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 to 8 which reads as full and God said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters and God made the firmament and divided the waters which is which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so and God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. When Lucifer, who came to be known as Satan, and some other angels that he had deceived, rebelled against God, they were all cast out of the third heaven, even as, as it was revealed unto the apostle John in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angel were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to the 
sea and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. We can see that as these fallen angels were cast out of the third heaven, some of them came to reside under the sea, others on, on earth or under the earth, but others fell down to the second heaven. And this is why we see many false deities being worshipped all over the world by human beings. For as these fallen angels were cast out of the third heaven, they have resolved in themselves to make human beings also to rebel against God, the Creator, by causing human beings to worship them. This is why the Word of God speaks about the principality and powers in the heavenly places when referring to the fallen angels who made the second heaven their dwelling place. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10, which says, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. And this is the reason Jesus Christ speaks about the powers of the heavens that will be shaken after the days of tribulation in Matthew chapter 24 verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall be shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Hence Lucifer, also known as Satan or the devil, who by subtlety or cunningness has become the chief of all the fallen angels made the second heaven his place of residence with some other fallen angels. This is why he is called the prince of the power of the air, even as the apostle Paul referred him as such in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2, that says, where in, in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. And as we read in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, since Satan was cast out, he, he has but great wrath against human beings. For he knows that he has but a short time left before he and all the other fallen angels are cast forever into the lake of fire. And these fallen angels in the southern heaven have created a cosmic force which stands as a spiritual barrier or fence to prevent the prayers of human beings from reaching unto God. For they know that when human beings pray to God, their prayers need to pass through the first and the second heaven before reaching the third heaven where God is in order for the prayers of human beings to be answered. And this is one of the reasons the word of God says that we, human beings, do not actually fight against our fellow human beings. But our real fight is against the wicked force, spiritual forces in the high places, also known as the second heaven. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, that says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's one of the main causes. Many people pray unto God, but do not see their prayers being answered. For there is a demonic spiritual cosmic force that blocks the prayer of people, thus preventing them from reaching unto God. And this cosmic barrier feeds or gets its power from the sin that people commit. This is why God said that it is our sin that causes him not to hear our prayers. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot say, neither his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. 
This is why every human being needs to know how to make sure that when he prays unto God, his prayer would reach God and that he would receive the answer to his prayer, even as it is spoken about the prayers of a person who walks in holiness before God by obeying the word of God. Revelation chapter 8 verse 3 to 4 that says, And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne, and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Hence, God would like us to understand six principles of mystery that make our prayer to pierce, to pierce the demonic cosmic force that has been established by the forces of darkness in the second heaven. Today we are only going to speak about the first principle, which is the disposition of the heart. The disposition of the heart. The heart, as the center of physical activities, relate to the physical organ that is found inside our chest, which beats at a certain rate, implying that the person